not really big on honey. I love the bees. She loves the honey. And I've been a beekeeper for about 10 years now. Uh, I always wanted uh, something that both my wife and myself could share at some point. And she was a reluctant beekeeper at first, but uh, she's, she's learned quite a bit. We run mostly Italian bees. I prefer the Italians. They produce more honey, in my opinion. Uh, a little more susceptible to disease. But if you stay on top of it, you can, you know, you'll persevere. But on the other hand, there's definitely luck involved because you can do everything right and you can still lose them. The worst thing is still varroa mites. It's the one thing that you really have to take care of. They spread viruses. A lot of times it's starvation, depending on how much honey they put away and how much you fed them. The varroa mites just decimating their population. Yeah, nine times out of ten, the reasons that the bees don't make it through the winter is varroa mites. I'm Betsy Dyer. I, I teach biology uh, at Wheaton College. I also am an amateur beekeeper. I uh, had my first colony of bees about 22 years ago um, and had a few successful seasons with them. Um, currently, I have no bees. I have all the equipment. Um, lots and lots of equipment, including a honey extractor. Um, currently I have no bees because last season I lost my entire colony of bees. Um, amateurs like me don't necessarily go and get that diagnosed to be officially named colony collapse disorder, but I strongly suspect that's what it was, and I've had it happen before. Something is killing our honeybees in staggering numbers. There's a name for what's happening, colony collapse disorder. Millions of bees are dying in hives across the United States, and nobody knows why. Researchers are calling it colony collapse disorder. Called colony collapse disorder. As colony collapse disorder. I got my most recent um, package of bees, the ones that I lost. They came up on a huge 18-wheeler truck from the south, and where they had been previously was someplace in the southwest. Because what goes on is that bees are trafficked all over the country and all over the world on an industrial scale um, that you might expect for anything on an industrial scale, but there's no there's no like backyard equivalent like, oh, I guess I'll get my package of bees from my county or something or from, you know, some organic farmer in my state or there's not that. It, they, they arrive having had a really rough journey. You really get that they've had a rough journey traveling on this big truck, exchanging diseases, exchanging viruses, exchanging parasites bringing parasites from who knows where, bringing viruses from who knows where, and also being exposed to horrific conditions. Then they're put on a truck again and sent to some other field where there's some other pesticides being used. So actually to nobody's surprise, um, this should be a challenge to the bees. Um, and then you might think, well, I want no part of bees uh, that have that kind of a life. Um, but you have to. My mother's joke was, um, where does the... Ow! All right, then back off. Back off. They don't like the blue, maybe. Where does the bee put its stinger at night? And just... No, oh, come on, Celeste. And it's honey. 